Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the May 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how they're made and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time on my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared a look with you at the newest sheet load of cards, May 2022 showed you my first set and told you how you can download the printable for free. Well, today I am back to show you how I made that set. And guess what? My team of collaborators will also be sharing their sets. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. In the description box, I have some links to the searches because we do use that special hashtag that is in the title. So you can click on the search for YouTube or Instagram, or if you're just hanging out here on YouTube, you click right on that hashtag in the title and all of the videos from the collaboration team will pop up. Now, if you're inspired to make cards using this sheet load of cards, I do have a couple hashtags here at the top for you to use. I like to search here on YouTube and over on Instagram. And hey, if you're on TikTok, I'm going to start searching there too. So I would love for you to use those. So make sure once you're done watching my video today that you check out the videos here on YouTube and the posts over on Instagram for tons more inspiration from my team of collaborators. I know that they would love for you to stop by. This month's sheet load is another special edition. I know 6x6 paper isn't really that special anymore, it seems like, but I did just point that out here on the top, and you use up almost all of your 6x6 pattern paper, so I think this is making the most of our supplies. This month, if you follow the supply list and cutting guides, you're going to yield six cards from just three pieces of pattern paper and some cardstock. I do have all of the supplies needed right up here for more information, and I went over some of that yesterday. And guess what? During the process, you'll be seeing that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies, and then we'll get started on the cards. In front of me are the main supplies that I'll be using for my cards today. Like I mentioned yesterday, the pattern papers and the stamp set came from the newest box of the month from Not Too Shabby. And this one will sell out quick, so if you love watermelons, you're going to want to get right on this. I do have a link in the description box. You can purchase a single box of the month, or you can subscribe and save a little bit each month. I chose some pink and black cardstock for my card bases and my mats. I will just be using scraps of white cardstock later for my sentiments. And to color my images in, I got out some Zig Clean Color Real brush pens. If I add any other products or tools along the way, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be cutting my three pieces of pattern paper per the instructions on page two. Now for this first piece, I'll want to make sure I know what is the top and bottom, and then I'm going to rotate that top to the left. Now this first cut, I will make it five and a half inches tall, and that's just because I will get the biggest strip left over at the bottom to decorate the insides later. So I cut it five and a half inches, and then it gets rotated so the top is once again the top, and I cut four strips. I cut two at one inch, and two at two inches. Now because they do all add up to six inches, make sure not to do what I call a generous cut, which is when you might cut it just a little bit over what you need. Try to cut it right at the correct measurement. Once I have all four of those strips, those final two I cut need to be cut down in two pieces. So it gets rotated. I cut two inches off the top 
and then the second piece gets cut to 3.375 which if you look on the printable that is the same as three and three eighths so when I line this up on my cutter the right edge of my paper will be halfway between three and a quarter and three and a half Once those six pieces are cut from the watermelon paper, I make those same cuts on the remaining two patterns. Next, I got out two pieces of black cardstock to cut down per the CS1 instructions. Now, because one sheet can actually get you four pieces, we will stop cutting when we have a total of six. I start by cutting these into five and a half inch tall by eight and a half inch wide pieces, so just in half. And you'll notice on this second piece that I keep one piece and set the second to the side. Once those are cut down, I then cut these into the same width as pattern paper piece C, which was 3.375 or three and three eighths. And I just cut until I have six of those pieces. Finally, for the cutting, I brought in three pieces of pink cardstock that I'm going to cut into my card bases. Now, I don't always show you this step, but I thought in case some of you were newer to card making, you might like to see it. I want these cards to fold on the short edge on the top, so I cut each of those three pieces in half to four and a quarter inches wide and leave it at the 11 inches tall. Now, if you prefer side folding cards, you can definitely cut these to five and a half by eight and a half and then score and fold in half. Speaking of scoring, I did go ahead and bring in my score buddy. This was a heavier weight cardstock, so I wanted to make sure I had a nice fold when I made it. I am using my Cat Scrappiness pencil bone folder here to make that score line. I do go down that line a few times instead of pressing hard just once, and then I can fold that in half and I have a nice crisp fold on the outside. Now on the inside, if your card bases are too dark for your personal message, you could always add a piece of white cardstock. I finished scoring and folding these and then it's time to move on to some stamping. I will be stamping my focal points on Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. I cut this piece down to six by six because I knew that I could fit six of my popsicle images onto it. I start by placing that popsicle on the bottom center of my cardstock, and then because it is a new stamp, I run my fingers over it before inking it up and stamping it twice for now with the VersaFine Onyx Black. I'm stamping it twice, once again, just because it's a new stamp, I wanna get a nice crisp black, but by the time I had stamped the sixth one, I was only inking these up one time. Now, since I have that set up in its place, once it's stamped first, I can then shift my cardstock down and I can stamp another one right above the first popsicle. So you'll want to make sure when you do shift it each time that you're not gonna stamp over the image you just made. Once I have three stamped on the right side, I then rotate my paper 180 degrees and do the same exact thing. So in the end, I have a total of six of those popsicles. Now I chose my inks today and my cardstock because I will be using those Zig Clean Color Real brush pens. If you're using alcohol markers or some other form of coloring, you might choose a different ink and cardstock. I chose some colors that I thought would work well with a watermelon popsicle, and I will be blending those out with the colorless blender. I will list each of the colors in the description box below. When I do color, I do very simple coloring. I start by getting out my pinkish Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker, and I add color to about the lower quarter of that popsicle. Now you will notice that I did not worry about covering up the seeds because I will show you later what I do about that. Now to start blending, I get out that colorless blender and blend it out just a little bit into the open area. Then because I do want it to be lighter at the top, I wipe off my brush over on the right and then I just continue that same process, blending a little further and then cleaning off my blender until the entire popsicle is full of color. You'll notice there at the top right, there is a little bit of a highlight. 
for the bottom portion of the popsicle, I got out a couple different greens. The one closest to the pink I use a light green on, and the one at the bottom I use a darker green. To make it look like the popsicle is rounded, when I color those two strips, I color on the outside first just a little bit, and then use the blender to pull the color in. Then if I think the outside needs to be a little darker, I bring back in the same marker and just add a little bit more color. Finally, for the popsicle stick, because I do feel like the shading would be at the top of the popsicle, I start up there, coloring in once again about a third, and then I blend that out so it is all filled with color, but I have that highlight toward the bottom right. I do color the remaining five popsicles off screen. If you do have any questions on my coloring or anything, you can always leave those in that comment section below. Here's a look at all six of the popsicles which I cut out with my brother's scan and cut. And I wanted to show you here that after I colored the first two popsicles, I decided that I didn't really like that color with my pattern papers. So I switched it to more of a red. And once again, I will have those final markers listed in the description box. Now here's a look at what I'm gonna do with the watermelon seeds. Because I colored over all of them, all I did was bring in the darkest gray alcohol marker I have and just color those in. Now you'll never know that I just colored that whole top of the popsicle. To add some extra texture to the card bases, I brought in this wonky dot stencil from Tailored Expressions and I used Dusty Rose ink, which is the same color as my card base, and I added some of these dots to each side of the front. Now the reason I didn't add it in the middle is because of course my pattern paper will cover that. I think these wonky dots look just like watermelon seeds, so it worked out perfect with this kit. Now I'm not affiliated with Tailored Expressions, but I think you all know that I do love their products. I have linked this stencil in that description box below. My next step was to get my sentiment stamped, and my sentiment pieces are a little bit smaller than what it shows on the sketch. You can always cut that to fit what you need. I will be using the Thanks a Melon sentiment from the stamp set and stamping this once again with VersaFine Onyx Black. I set my piece of cardstock up on the lower right of my Misty, just right in that corner. And then when I set up my sentiment, I need about an inch to the right is what I figured out. The left will be later cut at an angle. So I set up my stamp, make sure it's straight, and then I think it stamps pretty well that first time. So once I have that first one done, all I have to do is bring in the next piece of cardstock and then I can just keep inking up and stamping until I have all six of my sentiments. As I just mentioned, I am gonna be cutting an angle on the left side of these sentiments. There is no real science to this. I just grab my scissors and then cut that angle. Now for me, I went ahead and used that first one as a template to cut the remaining ones, but you could definitely just snip these one at a time and how the angles land, they land. I got back out all of my pattern paper pieces and I made what I call my card kits. And this is just when I grab the pattern papers for each of my cards. Now with the way this sketch works and the paper, each one can look slightly different if you grab different pieces as you go along. Now I'm gonna get those pattern paper pieces put on their black cardstock mat. If you take a look at the sketch, there is a small border on the left, the center, and the right, as well as between the top and bottom cut pieces. Now, I just went ahead and eyeballed this when I did my first card. I got the adhesive on the back of each piece and then placed it onto the cardstock mat. I just did my best to try to get all of those borders even. Now you'll see here for the second one, I bring back in the printable. And because if you print it at 100%, it is the actual size of the card, you could always use that to help you figure out where to place your pieces. But once again, that's kind of up to you. And you know, these cards, they are handmade. They definitely don't have to be perfect. 
Another thing to keep in mind while you're putting your cards together is if your pattern papers are double-sided, you could always flip those over for an even wider variety of patterns. Now, as I continue to put together the rest of the cards, I do want to take a minute and recognize I have some channel members who just recently hit one year of channel membership. So they have been with me since the beginning. I want to say a great big thank you to the following members that you see up on screen now. Once all of those pattern papers were in place, I then added these papers to the card front. Now pay close attention to the sketch. This piece does not get centered left to right. It is more over toward the left. Of course, you can always make it your own by centering it or putting it over on the right. That is completely up to you. You could also add this piece with some foam tape for a little added extra dimension. And speaking of foam tape, off screen I put some foam tape on the back of my sediments and at the back of the top of my popsicle. Because the way the bottom will lay, later I'll use some liquid glue there. I placed the sediment about an inch up from the bottom of the card, aligned all the way over to the right. Now you can definitely adjust this up or down to fit your needs. To add the popsicle, I pulled the release paper off the foam tape part and I added a little adhesive glue on the back of the stick. Then I placed this on the card front so it overlapped that sediment just a little bit. I continued adding the sentiments and popsicles to the remaining cards and then off camera I did just a little bit more decorating. And here we're going to take a close up look at a card and I'll tell you more about that. Up on the upper right of each of the popsicles I added some highlight detail with white gel pen and I also added a bow to the popsicle stick. I alternated between dark green and white and light green and white twine. Then on the inside, I used up the remaining strips of pattern paper there on the edge and I also added a piece of white cardstock for the message and I did a stamp off of the popsicle. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to click on the hashtag in the title and the Instagram search in the description box to see what my team of collaborators has created. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.